Well, hello there, and you join us here today to answer the big question, a watch is getting boring. If you're looking for a watch, interesting or boring, you can find plenty pre-owned at watchfinder.com. Uh, well, since Tom and I have had creative differences within the band and we've decided to take a little bit of a creative sabbatical from each other, I thought today we would introduce a guest for us to discuss this particular topic. Uh, welcome, Adrian. How are you doing? The artist formerly known as Bark and Jack. What's up? <laughs> I'm very good. Thanks very much. What's up? What's up? Um, yeah, I'm very good. Very happy. It's a, it's a morning in Glasgow. Uh, it's raining, so it feels like the world is right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, very happy. The perfect <laughs> theme for us to discuss boring watches. Let's start this conversation, Adrian. Uh, I think about 99% of the watches bought and sold in the world are black or potentially, if you're feeling flash, a white dial diver. Uh, your collection is themed around some watches that I would say are not that exciting. <laughs> That's a very polite way of putting it. <laughs> what do you think the state of the world is when it comes to boring watches? So I, I think you could apply exactly the same situation with cars. The majority of cars that are sold are white, grey or black. If you want to buy a car that you're going to easily sell on, you want it to be black or gray yeah um and white if you wanted to be the cheapest and 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 the same with, with trousers if, if you did a a, a, a poll on, on what color jeans you'd have there'd be blue denim if you did a poll on which color chinos you had there'd probably be cream or tan and so i think it's one of those things however i do feel like it it, it is changing um and i do have a boring watch collection my, my <laughs> dials are either black or white and if i'm feeling adventurous i'll wear a white dial watch with an orange uh, gmt hand and that's that's me being <laughs> oh look i'm adventurous and crazy <laughs> i thought you were going down a trend there of suggesting that you needed to think about the resale value of your jeans um i'm glad that's not the case it's really weird well, you never is know I was thinking of trousers as well. I thought when when, well, you, posed, so when you posed this question, yeah, <laughs> it's not boring. When you posed this question, I was like, "How can you? You can't. It's not. You can't really get bored with watches. You can't really get bored with trousers. You know, it's like, I don't know. I suppose you need to wear trousers, don't you? It's sort of almost legal, it's legal <laughs> obligation. Um, but but I was my analogy was I was thinking. It's a bit. It's a bit like music. Sometimes, if you ever got bored of music, like I'm oh, fed up with new music, like everything's rubbish. Like, bring back the '90s, that sort of thing. It's a bit like that. You get you get the big hits that are a bit overplayed, but there is cool stuff out there. You just have to look for it. And I think it's the same with watches. You got the big famous models that maybe you can tire of those a little bit, but if you look around, there's still exciting stuff going on. I, I was really excited when dubstep became big. <laughs> because it, it for me audibly it was so different from the normal rock and roll that i'd listen to mm. it, it had the same angst as as something like rage against the machine or system of a down it still has that that angst but it, it kind of tickled your ears in, in a, a sonic way that that normal rock music or pop music wouldn't do and so i i kind of feel like maybe that's what's happening in the watch world is that we've perhaps got to this plateau of Speedmasters in black, Submariners in black, uh, and everything else in, in black and white. And, and maybe we need this, or maybe we are seeing this dubstep kind of injection of excitement. Um, mm -hmm. m may maybe that's that's what Rolex have been doing with the, their weird stuff. I don't know where that's come from. Well, yeah, talking mm -hmm. about the Rolex weird stuff, there is there just seems to be a general theme year on year it's like the, the exciting thing this year is that we're going to do some of our watches in green Ooh. um but we've seen uh, <laughs> in the last year we've seen the rolex bubble dial and the puzzle dial we saw the richard mill rm88 with the crazy emojis is this tom do you think the industry finally going come on let's let's live a little no, those are novelty records. That Rolex bubble dial is crazy frog. Like, no one respects it. <laughs> it's just, it's a little yes. bit of fun, and then it will go away again. But we will keep plowing on with the hits, the your Submariners and your Daytonas and stuff. I think you could, you could argue it's maybe uh, Rolex trying to get a bit of wiggle room, perhaps. Maybe carve out some new avenues, 
putting out some feelers into some new areas. But generally, I kind of feel like that was just like a fun one-off. I'm not sure. We'll see, I guess. But I wouldn't expect like that to be a the new thing from Rolex every year. Or maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. But in my mind, I kind of felt like that was a, a weird experiment that went wrong. <laughs> well, it's become a very desirable and popular watch. Um, Bubble Dial, Adrian, what's your take on it? So uh, yeah, I'd, 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 that that point about novelty, I'd I'd, I'd expand on that, and I'd say I'd, I used to work for a, um, a furniture company, which is uh, epically sexy. Which is the industry <laughs> we wanted to get to. The Dream mystery job. continues to be <laughs> and, unraveled. <laughs> and and every every seasonal launch, they would go with a. It's it's, it's kind of like fashion and 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 the the runway outfits. You'd go with something eye catching like i don't know a chesterfield sofa in a bright orange velvet fabric and you'd look at that look at it and think damn that that looks cool that that looks i'd love to be able to to have that sofa i'd love to be able to be cool enough and have the house cool enough to have a bright orange velvet chesterfield mm. but you don't go for that mm. you, yeah. you you see that level of coolness and then you come down and you might get you might get a navy blue velvet um chesterfield or you might get the chesterfield but in in a in a bright orange cotton which is a little more relaxed and so i feel like it's these brands saying look we are this cool you're unlikely to buy that so you're probably gonna you're probably gonna see the bubble dial and then come in and get a green op or you're gonna see the bubble dial and you're gonna come in and, and you're gonna get that date just because it's connected to that bubble dial a bit like cars and and f1 we're obsessed with, oh, look, th this car brand's done this with, with the F1 cars. We're not going to buy an F1 car. We're not going to drive like that. But we like the association with that. And so it, it's it's that catwalk yeah. outfits. It's it's the, the poster boy or poster girl product that grabs the attention. And you aspire to be that cool. You aspire to have the, the, the charisma and guts to wear that product. But you don't. You go in and you buy the black dial <laughs> or, or, or you buy the slightly colorful op or, or, or whatever it is the bubbles dial is just not practical it doesn't go with anything <laughs> you can't wear that to a job interview <laughs> but but that's the other side of it is i like little bits of color and i am actively looking for watches that have touches of color because i am legitimately boring i, I wear gray <laughs> or black jumpers if i'm feeling adventurous i'll wear a navy blue jumper oh i wear <laughs> dark blue denim jeans i'm actually wearing washed out blue denim je denim jeans and i feel like this is my cool outfit because they're not my normal outfit uh and 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 so i see watches as a way of adding a little bit of color a little bit of character to what i wear and so i'd, I'd 100 get the, the the bubble dial I'd, i can't be bothered with Rolex and, and their wait lists and, and so I'd, i just ignore it but it's that element of color that's that i want in 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 a watch um, and so, although I am wearing a, a black dial IWC Mark 20, which you, you don't get more default <laughs> watch than that, it's, it's a bit it's as exciting as a black dial Speedmaster. But but that is what I want in a watch. I, I, I do want a bit of sexiness, a bit of colour, a bit of fun. And that's what the bubble and the, the emoji stuff does for me. <clears throat> it's like a second level of aspiration. Like, oh, I aspire to own a Rolex. Yeah, I will, I will save up and I'll get on the wait list and I will one day get yes. it. And then it's like, right, I've got a Rolex. And then one day I will, I will aspire to get the crazy one and <laughs> that will be my next goal. But I'm not cool enough for it. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah, it's, it's like getting your, your first supercar. You've got your, your, your black or white Lamborghini, but you haven't quite got your bright orange. Yeah. Lamborghini. Yeah. Yeah. The that's, lime that's green. Point. Yeah. Next. <laughs> lime green. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we've, we've been talking about some of the mainstream watches and how they have just this little kind of halo piece that they've been introducing and pushing a little bit further each time, which adds a bit of spark. It's like their headline piece that everyone talks about, but maybe most people won't buy. But I also think it's worth mentioning some of the independents, um, people like Moser, Orwerk and MBNF, who seem to dedicate themselves solely to the idea of doing things that aren't boring. Do you think in a world of black and white dial divers that they are gaining more credibility, Adrian, because they are doing something different? Yeah, that's, that's a brilliant point. And, and this is the fun thing around the independents is that they, of, of course, 
any person who goes into the world of making a product wants to make a profit from that product. But when you get to the size of Rolex, when you get to the size of Omega, you, you have external influences or external um, pressures to keep that product as profitable as possible. Whereas when you're an independent and you're only going to make 50 watches, you can invest money into making a fun 50 watches or 50 watches of a commercial product and then 50 watches of a slightly less commercial product. You're making so little numbers, basically, that it doesn't matter really what you do. You can just be creative. And that's kind of like Rolex. Rolex won't make as many bubble dials as they would a black Submariner or a black Explorer because they just know commercially it doesn't make sense. Whereas someone like Studio Underdog, they can just go out and just make super crazy stuff. And it, it, they're just able to have fun. And and kind of the same with, uh, in, to a lesser extent, but more so than, than the big brands, um, Christopher Ward. They, they still get to play with colour and still get to mess about and do something out of the ordinary. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I feel like that's the fun part of independence. That's the fun part of microbrand. Mm. Tom, as a fan of the affordables, what's your take on kind of the, the straight and narrow versus the, the wilder stuff? I, I know you tend to have a little bit of an interest towards some of the bits that have uh, uh, some more uniqueness to them. I can't, again, to plow on with my music analogy, it's it's the same thing. It's like the mainstream I, I like to shy away from that and go into the weird pockets of Spotify and stuff and find new and interesting things that, you know, oh, Caroline is brilliant. That's fantastic at weddings, you know, whatever. But like there's more interesting stuff that isn't appropriate at weddings. That's independent <laughs> music. And it's the same as independent watchmakers, isn't it? That You've got the mainstream and then you've got the weird stuff. These guys on the peripheries doing stuff that's a bit more interesting. Yeah. and the, and And I think... And that also comes into affordability as well. Like indie bands are less subscribed. You can get right to the front of the stage. And it's the same with watches as well. They're cheaper. You can usually get hold of them. There's no wait list. Um, sometimes they get hugely popular. In the case of Studio Underdog, they tap into something and everyone jumps on board. I like this connection to music because I, I, I think a lot of people, and, and I, I certainly see this in the comments, um, I think a lot of people feel that a watch brand is big because of its product yeah and it's it and and, and it's it's prestigious because of the product mm. and that's that's really not true it's it's big because of the marketing branding yeah the, the marketing budget it's, it's prestigious because of the, the story that they've been able to tell with money behind them and that's pretty much the same thing in music mm. is that a brand a, a, a band however aggressive or however um indie they might sound they are big and they are on the radio and they're getting the listens because of someone getting behind them and putting money into their marketing unless they've been creative for, for example studio underdog i know richard has, has been creative and and has been persistent with trying to network and connect with people and and something like that has been an organic growth mm -hmm. he's now got money behind him because he's been successful but but he got to that place because he was creative similar to arctic monkeys yeah. getting big on um on on myspace i think it was uh, they, they saw a way of getting out there and getting exposure but typically a brand has got to where they are because they've been clever marketing and th there's nothing wrong with that my point is, is that the flip side of that is that independence often gets shunned because they're charging X amount for a watch. And people say, oh, you can't pay that for that watch because you could go over to Omega or you could go over to Launchings and get a similar one with prestige and 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 build quality yeah. for this amount of money. But they're two separate products. They're two separate lanes of, of products. Mm. Launchings, who has is part of the, the, the biggest watchmaking conglomerate in, in the world, they have epic amounts of um, economy of scale behind them. They have movement manufacturers that make movements for probably 50% of the Swiss watch industry. And so, yeah, they, they could churn out a well-made watch for a reasonable amount of money. Whereas Joe Bloggs down the road, who's creating equally sexy watches, you're going to have to spend more money because yeah. they're, they're, they're not able to build a million watches a year and sell those parts off to other subsidiaries of a massive group uh, or, or have 
I'd, we could easily go down a, a contentious route of where things are actually made versus where things are, are <laughs> <laughs> advertisers being made. Yeah. Uh, we won't get that up. There are I'd, very strict rules in place, stuff. Adrian. I don't know what you're implying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very strict rules that are easily broken. <laughs> uh, but but my, my, my point is that I, I think it's important to look at two separate products, uh, two, two, two products like that in, in a separate light, similar to music. You could go onto Spotify and find a legitimately brilliant song, beautifully created, beautifully recorded, beautifully executed, played by very, very talented musicians, and it gets five listens a month, simply because they, they're, they're just bad at marketing or they just haven't been picked up yet. It, it reminds me of the recent release of the um, formerly known as Argon Space One, now known as Space One. Um, if you're wondering what happened to them and their Kickstarter, they uh, uh, ran into a little bit of trouble with a brand called Aragon. And now you have to go and find them online to go get your watch. But yeah, so they... The Lord of the Rings guy. <laughs> well, you would think that it's the whole thing. Right. Um, they did an incredible job of designing something very, very not boring, very contentious. Some people thought it looked absolutely horrible. Like this, this watch was compared to a, a golf club, a car key... Um, not to mention being very similar to the Debe Tune Dreamwatch 5, but they created something affordable that was very, very different. And they set out when they had the Kickstarter to get a backing of like 80,000, and they ended up with a million, which tells me that people are hungry for something different. Even if the voices in the comments suggest that most people don't like it, the people with the money actually do mm -hmm. but the, the the cynical side of me comes out with that as well so my, my original plan for bark and jack was to launch a watch brand and it, it still is a dream of mine to w launch a watch brand and, and the, the the natural um uh, the, the natural route is to go down kickstarter mm -hmm. and you always put down and a very achievable goal and then you have marketing behind you to blow that goal out of the water because that in itself becomes a story regardless of whether the watch regardless of whether the product is story worthy or not yeah there's always this this beautiful rags to riches or or, or um humble brand does well by wanting to raise a, a, a mere eighty thousand pounds suddenly wow they've got a million pounds in, in bank and so many people backing them and and so it's it's kind of one of those default stories that that no, I'm, I haven't. I don't know these guys. I'm, I'm sure they're, they're lovely people. But but stuff like that always just makes me think. Uh, it's just the standard default Kickstarter marketing. Um, if that is standard default, I need to um, I need to start my own watch brand so I can get a million. <laughs> oh, it's and I'd, I've I've got a couple of mates who 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 have done Kickstarter stuff and just launched one product. And this is a problem with micro brands and, and Kickstarters that you can just launch one product have massive there's no upfront costs apart from a little bit of r d and making a handful of um of of uh, prototypes to send out to people and then you just launch a brand if it doesn't work you've spent a couple of thousand on on r d and and marketing uh, and if it does work then you walk away with a shed ton of money and after all isn't that what we're all here for we, we all want our Scrooge McDuck <laughs> swimming pool full of money to wire away our days in. <laughs> yeah. um, so really, I think what we're suggesting overall here, Tom, is that there is a lot of boring watches. And there are some fun watches for the people who've bought the boring watches or want to deviate in a different way. But is boring fine? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, it goes back to what Adrian was saying about the cars, isn't it? You need something practical to go about your business in don't you like i think i think yeah there is the boring watches which are the bread and butter watches for most brands that's what everybody wears something relatively nondescript that they can wear with their washed out jeans and gray jumper or what have you and then <laughs> and then yeah you've got your argon space ones or whatever which are really crazy and wacky that only the most eccentric coolest people would wear but i think the really really good watches are the ones that fall somewhere in between those two things you know that that have a little bit of they're subtle enough to be daily wears but but have enough flair and flourish to be cool cool and elevated above that sort of boringness but um it's tricky it's a it's a tricky needle to thread i think and that's that's why i like my explorer 2 so much is because it, it it's I feel like it's it's a really nice level of boringness because it's just a round case. It's got the the typical the typical format of a watch, 
it's it's what buy a brand that that feels nice to wear it's 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 got that level of of build quality that you know this is a legitimately solid watch the movement inside is is legitimately brilliant but it's it's yeah. white instead of black <laughs> and it's got a, an orange twin, big fat orange 24 hour hand and pair it on on a bark and jack nato strap and you've got an absolute <laughs> killer uh, <laughs> get, get killer combination but but it it, the, it, it hits yeah. that bill of exactly what you've described as it it feels conservative enough to feel comfortable to wear but it has these tiny touches of oh look at me i'm a little bit out there for me to feel like it's something fun to wear at the same time yeah sometimes that's all you need isn't it it's just an orange hand on there and that just that's enough i'm cool yeah <laughs> yeah. It's like a boring suit, but you've got a fun pair of socks on, or the liner of your jacket is a little yes. bit nice. <laughs> That's exactly it. Sure. <laughs> That's exactly. You know, you know, you're cool underneath all that that that, that plain <laughs> yeah. navy blue pinstripe suit. <laughs> That's just for me. Um, I love that. If you want a Bark and Jack NATO strap, link very much not in the description below. Terrible, terrible man uh, plugging your uh, straps. Just, just Google it. Just Google it. <laughs> uh, link in the description below. They are good, um, good straps. Um, so there you have it, dear viewer and listener. Boring watches. Yes, there are a lot of them. They do exist, but it's what we all want, really. Maybe with a little pinch of something special. Thank you so much, Tom and Adrian, as well for uh, joining me today. Um, dear viewer and listener, put your thoughts down in the comments below. What should we talk about next? Please like and subscribe. Also, go check out Adrian Barker over on YouTube and all of his other things. Uh, links in the description below, and we will see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Bye bye. <laughs>